Live from London, it's Plank of the Week with Mike Graham. Good evening and welcome to Plank of the Week. It's Friday night on Talk TV. I'm Mike Graham and have we got some planks for you? I'm delighted to say we've got a fantastic panel tonight. Uh, we have got the glamorous um, Alex Phillips. We've got the legendary James Well. We've got the very beautiful Laura Dodsworth. And we've got the very funny... Steve not, and was, Alan. Yeah, well, Is that all right? Well, aim there, but you know. I'm actually getting, um, you know, being given a hard time by the way I'm describing people. Here's what we're playing for. Uh, it is, of course, the plank of the week, which is always here. Uh, people have been winning it for quite a long period of time. Uh, let's start off with straight away. Alex Phillips, who's your first one? Oh, it burns me to have to nominate them because I'm of their congregation, but it's got to be the Church of England. Are you a member of the Church of England congregation? Go to church, don't I? Do you? Yeah. I had no idea. Shh. Well... Don't Tell us, why have, you, why have you nominated them? Uh, because they've come up with this whole idea that they need a billion pound fund yes. for racial awareness and reparations and all the rest of that nonsense, the sort of woke thing in, yeah. in, in the wake of BLM. Who's it for? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't think they know they're going to spend a billion pounds finding out, I right. guess. Black companies. Yes. But, yeah, black, black companies. <laughs> what I think is so mad about this is, number one, everyone's now going, oh, look, they're really rich, aren't they? And people like me who actually give their church a bit of money every week, it's like, mm, you probably don't need there it, do you? There are rescue yeah. homes that uh, need it. Yeah. yeah, but my church gives it to all sorts of bits and bobs. But now if they're going to give it to this fund, it's done. Yeah, I mean, but if also, local churches in local communities give money to local things, mm -hmm. that's good, isn't it? No, yeah, exactly. And that's what my church that. does. It goes and, like, that's you what know, they're meant to do. chats to prisoners and homeless people and stuff yeah. and that's all cool <laughs> but the other the mad part about this is fact number one 80 mm. percent of the anglican church congregation is now black yes. because africans like christianity whereas we despise it in right. this country and ridicule it yes. and they're not into any of and this quite woke stuff. Yeah. if i might say they're not into any of this mm. any of this nonsense and secondly part of this whole package of oh we're going to apologize for the role we played in slavery yeah. and colonization so why are you a this? christian because i believe in god why that's because, not the answer. Uh, that's not the because, question because at hand. Interesting. May I re may I refer you to the chair? You know, we don't want to get into it. That's <laughs> another show. I know. That's, that's called Christian of the that's week. That's called cross talk. Right? Yeah, that's different. But I mean, <laughs> the other thing that seems odd to me is that <laughs> the Church of England wasn't particularly involved in the exploitation of the world during the British Empire, what? was it? But what they're apologising for was it? is going to Africa and converting loads of people to Christianity. Right. It's just mental. What, what are you doing? Yes. That is that is a really important point. Uh, part mm. of actually, because in the report they produced. Number 32, the recommendation that it was penitence, and the church commissioners think the Church of England should make a public apology for having converted it's just Africans mad. and and um, discourage their traditional uh, mm. uh, religious practices. But actually, that's what the Christianity is supposed to do. It's supposed to evangelise. So they're why basically I hate religion. well, fair enough. But but back to back you know, to you Alex's point. You know better point. than somebody else. That's got, what you're saying. Yes, but that is that is the raison d'être of the church. It's what yeah. Christ told the disciples to do, and now they're supposed to apologise. Yeah. Well, hang, hang on, where's that? Go forth. You must have go forth and apologise. Where's it going to end? Should we be making reparations to Catholics in this country, or should we? But should we be, what, should be approaching Italy for reparations to right. the Druids? So I did a right. calculation the other day, and I thought, if we're going to play the reparations game, that could be a nice Saturday night yeah. punky little TV show. We could get checks off all sorts of people. Let's start with Nazi Germany. Oh, Germany owes us yeah. loads of money for the Blitz. The Romans, of course, they killed Jesus. Normans. Don't like them. The Normans, Normans yeah. the Vikings. Yeah. We could be asking for checks from all over the world. We could all be the benefit of being mm. the church is that you can forgive yourself. Yes. Which rather cuts short the whole needing to pay reparations. Yeah. Quite right. Yeah. You're just like pardoning yourself as the President of the United States of America. You just go, yeah, you're pardoned, that's OK. But Did you see that today, actually, this week, um, the Archbishop of Canterbury, or uh, Justin Wokeby, as I like to call him, has uh, claimed that he now walks around with a panic alarm uh, because people hate him so much. And I'm like, well, maybe you should just keep your nose out of political business and stick to saving the poor people who need saving. He has to be the but best I think Archbishop putting Christianity on the plank of the week is a great idea. Yes. Well, and all the other already, religions Steve as joke. well. Steve all joke. the other religions yeah, but we as can't, well. Yeah, we have to be more specific than that. We have to just do the Church of England. People who believe in a not, fictitious being. Yeah. Well, lots of people believe in a fictitious being. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing I, wrong they with can it. never you explain in, to you me. You know, why. we have a very broad church here at Plank of the Week. You can. Believe in anything you want. Yeah. If you want to believe in, you know, the cult of Star Wars, you can do that. But, James, you're going to have to stop interrupting because otherwise we'll never get to the end of the show. Oh, sorry. Okay. Do you mind? Yeah. Um, well, I'm in that sort of you know, mood Just tonight. shut up for a minute because we're going to have a look at Julia Hartley Brewer clashing uh, with an activist who thinks that she's wrong and that you're wrong. This is a woman called Iman Aiton.
When do I get my reparations from the Roman Empire? When do Being I get them from the Vikings? You're about the racism, which means that you're leading with your bigotry, your agenda, my, whether oh, that be I your am. personal agenda yeah. or journalistic. It could be oh, journalistic. Yeah, well, we know these, it's probably these times, I'm white. DB News. No, it's probably because I'm white. News and, and talks just talks about my bigotry. And right -wing agendas that seem to be bigoted. You That's just talked about bigotry. You just accused someone who's asking you questions no, of bigotry. No, because you wouldn't say this to a Jew. You wouldn't oh, say this to a Jew. Yeah. Now, I'm afraid I am out of time, but you did a great job Thank making you. your arguments. I well did. done. Um, Iman Aiton, who claims to be an anti-racism activist, but not entirely sure she is. Yeah, she's only actually an anti-racism activist for money. Yeah, I, I mean, know. she doesn't actually behave like I that in the street. Iman. You know. Yeah. No, I know, Iman, she and she's wouldn't... actually really good fun. The way, the way she said it. she wouldn't say this to a Jew as well. I know. Really Why would you bring that into it? Really odd. Just ridiculous. Mm. Anyway, let's move on. Sorry. That's enough of Christianity. James Whale, let's talk about burglary. Burglary, OK. Yes. Well, burglary is something the police don't do. No. Well, hopefully and... not. <laughs> 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 Some do, they of did course. Plenty of other Some clients. of the bad apples yeah. in the Metropolitan um, Police I uh, found burglarising. Uh, you know, it just beggars belief. We go on about this woke culture, this woke country in yes. which we live, uh, and if you get a burglary, you ring out the police, uh, and they'll say, right, we'll, 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 we'll get round when we can. Mm. It could be a few days later. So I suggest if somebody is being burgled, you ring up and say, I think somebody's going to get hurt yeah. really badly. Yeah. Very, very badly there's, indeed. There's one you say part someone's of... questioned your pronouns, they'll yeah. be right over. There's, yeah. one, there's one part of Britain, I think it's somewhere in Yorkshire, where they've actually solved no burglaries at all yeah. in the no, entire year. It's worse than that. Yeah. It's actually 50% of police boroughs. It's half of all police yes, no, boroughs. I know. boroughs. Yes, no, it's, it's half of police boroughs that, that have yeah. solved none. But there's one particular place where they've they've solved nothing at all. But yeah, literally if, nothing. If we injured, I was going to say something worse. If we injured a burglar, yeah, uh, we'd be carted straight off, mm. wouldn't we? Probably. Yeah. Because and if it's I found somebody in my house yeah. who shouldn't be there, I'm going to try and get the drop on them. I don't care whether they're facing me or facing yes. away or running away. I'm going to try and get the drop oh, on them. I always remember them coming in. What would be your Cluedo weapon of choice? I'm not telling you. I always, remember, the will be right. I always remember Brian Moore, remember the uh, rugby player. He used to do a show on Talk Sport. And I came in one morning and he had a black eye. Yeah. And I said, what happened to you? And he went, oh, I caught a burglar in the house last night. I went, how's he doing? He went, he's in hospital. <laughs> 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 and good. And we don't actually... We I don't mean, take it very seriously. England, you, know. you know, when somebody goes into your home and, and these complete little... Ugh, Toe rags. Yeah. Um, they, they go into a disabled person's yeah. home, an elderly person's home, yeah. who are awake in bed and can't do anything, and they, you know... They it's terrifying. Up. Minimum burglary, 10 years. Yeah. Kick out all these... This is what you have to do very quickly, and then I'll shut up. The police have to be a force, not a service. Right. Well, they have they to have catch to them first before you put them away. They have to employ proper people, not yeah. like the woke people they've got, and they can't have people who are not fit mm. enough. You see fat coppers waddling along, yeah. trying to chase somebody. They can't get yeah. them. We need They've got so many things stuck to them now, police. haven't they? Yeah. They've got this big vest with all this stuff on it, yeah, like, exactly. the, like the bat belt or something. Dress them in <laughs> but, you black. Know, what's all that them for? Look frightening. What's yeah, it for? This stuff doesn't do I anything. I'm going to ask you one question, though. If they're not investigating burglaries and they're not solving any crimes, what are they doing? What are a they paperwork. actually doing? Um, maybe we should get uh, people who are not police trained to do the paperwork, as mm. they used to have, well, they did and have, to a, have, have a police force. And what we need to do, stop putting people who don't pay their TV licence in prison, yeah. punish them in... Just get rid of the licence. Mm. And then people who do these sort of low-level crimes, uh, you can punish them in many other ways. Get rid Bring of all the, the stops, illegal I people say. who are here. Every, every person who comes in a boat, yeah. back... Put what the about the old the people channel. coming on the cruises in? Do you, take, do you take them out as well? The old people coming on the cruises? You said everyone that comes in on a boat. Oh, you're, you're just <laughs> you know, being silly. I though. am being silly, sorry. You're, in, you're the sort sorry. of person who becomes a I chief constable. I would arrest people coming on cruises, actually, to be honest, coming to Britain. Anyway, Laura, <laughs> what's your first one? Um, I'm going to nominate This Is Rigged, who yes. join the This ranks. is a new group, isn't it? Well, they're not too new, but they've really they've really hit the news this week. They really want to they also want to join the ranks of all the nutty eco loon yes. activists because they've put a lot of stunts around Scotland in right. the last week. And it would be hard to pick one moment, but I will. But mm. things they've done recently have included spray paying soup at the Scott Monuments. Yes. They've stolen from shopkeepers to give to the poor. <laughs> Huh? Never mind about the poor shopkeepers. Right. I'm not kidding, they really did that. They vandalised billboards. They took down the Union flag on a government building and replaced it with the Palestinian flag, which is not even a country. Oh, great. And um, the thing that I thought was really awful, it kind of 
there's some, there seems to be something so disrespectful and unpleasant about it. They smeared oatmeal and jam yeah. on a bust of Queen Victoria. Mm. They spray painted. I'm going to say a word. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it. But you can't say it. It's, it's the word they use. It's the c word. They spray painted the word <laughs> on the bus. Right. Um, and they don't. Shocking. They mm. don't. And then they glued themselves to it, obviously, because yeah, that's what these eco loons always do. And they don't seem to care. You know, although they're mm. supposedly campaigning about mm. food security, they don't seem to care about wasting Maybe it. Maybe it would be better to give the porridge to somebody who's hungry. Well, yeah, they, they, don't, they don't care about waste food security. They say that people can't, yeah. uh, can't afford to eat in this country, which is absolute and utter. <laughs> And, BS, quite and they frankly. link it all to climate as well, which is you know oil rigs. That's why yeah. they called this is rigged. But they don't they don't care about wasting food. Oh, is that they what the rig about, bit is? Yeah, I wondered what that was. I think so. They don't care about ruining art, education, mm. and culture for no. people who are lucky enough to go to free museums, which is something brilliant we do in yeah. this country. We have a wealth of amazing museums. They don't care about ruining all that. They're childish, selfish. Narcissists. narcissists exactly and everything that they're aiming for is just so stupid mm. you well, know they got... want a food hub for every 500 mm. people in scotland which sounds like it's a nice thing but what are they doing to tackle the causes of poverty they're yeah. doing anything to been... they've the already got a food hub uh, for 500 people yeah. in, in glasgow um it's called greg's um I... let's have, uh, <laughs> anyway let's have a look at the protest let's here it is back to the Victorian era. Diseases and starvation, such as rickets and scurvy, are on the rise. Freedom begins with breakfast. If you can't understand that, we'll shove it in your face. Food is a human right. And we call it a system of oppression under which we are suffering. Food is a human right. We don't want to be dragged back to the Victorian era. Oh, I mean, what's it going to do with her? That, you'll be in so I've much got a really trouble good doing solution that. For these she's from Northern people. Ireland, obviously. She's not even, she shouldn't even be in Scotland. Well, no, I agree, you know. but everybody gets very upset when you sort of start taking the mick out of their language or their, their oh, accents. Tough. I've got a really good solution for these mentally ill crackpot narcissists. Yeah. When they glue themselves to something, you say, do you want some help with that? Yeah. Mm. Stick a load of concrete over their hand and go like, you're yeah. a museum yeah. piece yeah. now, well yeah. done. I would just remember they did it Rot. in Germany with those people who came in to try and uh, occupy some kind of showroom, it was a car showroom, mm. and they just switched all the lights off and left them there. I know, and, I love that. You know, that. two days later they went back and they were lying in all sorts of horrible situations. So funny. But let's have a look at Mr James Whale dealing with one of these bozos. I think it's uh, an activist called He's the, uh, Xander Cloudsley. He's the CEO. Oh, he's is he? Names, Here we go. He? Never been employed, never paid any I, tax, I never done I, anything I, I useful I, for this country except go in, steal and vandalise the outside of a shop. And you well, smugly you sit there okay, on television. Them, well, and and, and quite have. frankly, uh, you depress me. Excellent. <laughs> you depress but they're always called, me. They're always called Xander, aren't they, or something it's ridiculous? Always posh names. Yeah. Always. And I think your point there about the tax is right, because you know everything they want has to come from the state, mm. but it's people's taxes that pay for it, and they themselves don't work or contribute. I mm, just think they're right. really, really selfish, mm. and they're yeah. the opposite of communitarian. Mm. If they really cared about the people they're supposedly standing up for, they wouldn't be ruining art and education and culture for it's them. It's why you don't How... get working class people doing this stuff. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Working way... class people know the value of money and don't care yeah. about one art. Of my so favorite moments not doing in, that. One of my favorite moments in the history of, of protest was uh, that moment in Canning Town. Do you remember when the um, the Extinction Rebellion people got up on top of the Jubilee Line train yeah. and all the people who actually had to go to work dragged them off the Excellent. Jubilee Line train yeah. and gave them a good kicking because they all had yes. to get to work. It was fantastic. <laughs> anyway, Steve, <laughs> give us your first one. I'm going Rishi Sunak because of uh, it's been great on social media. He yes. did an interview... Well, it for... could be for a lot of reasons, actually. This yeah, week, it's it? true. But I'm going to specify the interview they did for Grazia oh, magazine yes. with his wife um, and... This happens a lot on the way into elections where the, the PM will do a, an interview to try and look human, mm. which is worrying when our leaders need a media team to make them look human, but there you yeah. go. Uh, like, it's like when Theresa May was on the one show and said that the worst thing she ever did was run through a field of wheat. Yeah. It was probably something... That wasn't was, the worst thing she ever did. No, the worst it, thing she ever did was screw up the police force. Ah, it was ah, a big old... Yeah, exactly. Become exactly. Prime Minister. But, so back to Rishi. He, it was brilliant because um, I, it's like they're not getting on. No. He was so passive-aggressive through yeah. it. He moaned about the fact that he doesn't get to exercise, but she does. Yeah. She can't do the dishwasher, mm. right? She can't make the bed. If I were married to a billionaire, I'd shut up about the dishwasher. Yeah. I'd let her leave all the knives pointing up in the thing because yeah. of all, all the money. Um, my favourite thing in there was um, he, he goes back and redoes some of the stuff. So he'll reload the dishwasher, he'll remake the bed after she's done it. 
It's a good job he's not busy mm. with other priorities right. that he's waffled well, on about. Well, at one point, does he not say that sometimes he comes back up from the office and makes the bed? Yeah. And you kind of go, hang on, you're Prime Minister. Why are you leaving the office? Somebody could be trying to get hold of you. Or and you go, oh, sorry, he's gone upstairs to make the bed. I mean, he talks about his five priorities. Be honest, <laughs> call them seven and say that the first two are the dishwasher yeah. and the corners on the bed. Yeah. But there was a lovely bit where they, they Well, they're the only there. two he's had any chance of success with, to That's be fair. Uh, there was a lovely bit where they worked out that he loves the dishwasher and the bed, and they asked him, what does he prefer, loading the dishwasher or making the bed? And he said, there's a night. They both have a nice, satisfying ending, but I prefer the bed. <laughs> dog, Rishi, you well, dog, right? <laughs> well, let's have a look. Here's, here's a bit about them talking about breakfast. It was all very cringe. Definitely, Rishi's the better cook. All those years. Yes, they were not. No, you have less time, but I, you're definitely the better cook. I definitely have a great deal of enthusiasm, <laughs> but de Rishi definitely has more talent in that department. But it's mainly just breakfast on a Saturday morning. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay's ground. Could best out and do more um, if you have time. If I had time. I mean, haven't such seen this pair of wallies since Harry and Meghan did open. But don't you think he, is, he will have time soon, though? That's my favourite bit. Like, you have a lot yeah. of time. He'll be able day. to do the dishes all day. <laughs> yeah. Look like you they know. make nice neighbours, don't you? Know, they're no. Like, oh, they're soon act, no, you see, I nice, see that a different but you way. But you wouldn't go to their dinner party. No, I see, I see no that a different way. I, I want to be next door when I hear them having a row. Because you can believe that they live like that if you want, but nobody lives like that. No. Where they all sit there going, oh, yes, it's very funny, isn't it? But the problem it's so is... So funny, yeah, I love it. You know, New York, oh, you're disgusting, you are. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's totally it's bonkers. It's not the MP. Nobody's like that. The problem is that all members of parliament must have the worst advisers, because who advised yeah. right. him to do <laughs> that? Children, And the advisers the have no world experience no, or are, life yeah, yeah, yeah. experience his, his image and pr advisors they are young i mean let's they, get look, rid of them look at that home Sack alone them all. the home alone yeah, christmas that was, awful, ad. That was so misjudged no, no, hold on. so we're going to do the charts of the worst things rishi's ever done it's got to be that weird thing where you could send a message he'd be like alex i know you're concerned about yeah, immigration yeah. <laughs> all those pre-records yeah. it's like who made him do this i know it's but mad. why doesn't he have better judge of, of what he should Why does he not do? know I himself? Don't think he's a human. Surely, if you're able to get to become prime minister, albeit that you you didn't actually get him to vote for you, um, surely you should have the personality skills to know how to present yourself. Yeah. Rather than looking yeah. like a complete. But it's blank. the same with the leader of the opposition. Who, if he ever gets into power, God help us all. Yeah. But, the snake know, charmer. Keir, yeah, Keir Starmer, who looks yeah. so insincere, even if he's sincere. Yeah. And is is a, what do his advisors say to him? Obviously nothing. Don't talk to Angela Rayner. <laughs> anyway, listen, coming up, we've got much more coming. Um, we're going to have more stuff here. It's all in the wrong order, so I don't know what's coming next. It might be something to do with the um, royal family. Who can say? I don't know. It's Plank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. It's Friday night. This is, of course, Talk TV, the one place to be. And we've got plenty of planks. We've already got four very good nominations. I'm going to go with my first one. And it is President Joe Biden, who's had another great week. We had Super Tuesday this week, uh, where it turns out that it's going to be him against Donald Trump again, Mark II. Um, the difference, of course, between the two of them is that Trump is actually ahead in the polls and Joe Biden still doesn't seem to be very sure what on earth he's doing. Um, at, just after Super Tuesday happened, and we're going to show this clip now, he comes out in uh, in front of all the press, and he's previously been in trouble for talking to the press because his handlers don't like him to randomly talk to anybody in case he says something stupid. And he actually says, uh, uh, I shouldn't answer any questions. And then they all start asking him questions. And he literally just sits, stands there silently, staring at them like this. What's your message for Super Tuesday voters? Everyone, please move this way. Super Tuesday, say if you have a message for voters. Thanks, come on. Thank you so much. Thank you all for about 15 seconds, right, which is incredible. Um, but the real reason we're nominating him this, uh, this particular week is because it becomes clear that they've got a bigger migrant problem than we've got uh, in America. I'm going to New York later on this month, and apparently there's several hotels that I used to stay in, funnily enough. One of them was a Roosevelt Hotel on Lexington Avenue, now full of migrants, right, who have come into the US from Tijuana, from Mexico, but have somehow found their way into New York and Chicago and every other city. And it's now the single biggest issue uh, immigration, even in the Midwest, where nobody actually sort of, you know, crosses a border. Um, but it was revealed this week that Biden has been flying migrants into America to ease the pressure on the border, because there's there's something like four million illegal migrants who have oh come through the border this year alone, right? And it's turned out that he just, in the last month or so, flew 320,000 migrants into the country so that the border didn't get too congested. 
So it looks as though they're just as useless as we are at stopping illegal people from coming into the country. And of course, Trump has made hay about it and said, you know, this is unbelievable. I was talking to um, a US correspondent the other day who said, oh, actually, they've all done it. Obama did it. Trump even did it when he was in because they've got this system, they've got so many people coming in that they have to sort of try and almost let the air out of the, uh, hmm. the pressure cooker every now and again. So they actually bring people in. It's, it's extraordinary what's going a on. A dear friend of mine is an American correspondent for a big UK newspaper. Yeah. And he did a story about how certain foreign regimes were deliberately flying plane loads of people to Central America to yeah. queue up on the border. Yeah. We've had it in the newspapers here that the Wagner mercenaries are operating in Africa, destabilizing mm. regimes to encourage these yeah. huge migratory flows. These people aren't poor little refugees. They're pawns in an Act of They're war. being trafficked, aren't they? This is it's an, an act invasion. of yeah. war it's an deliberately invasion being without levelled weapons. against us by hostile states. But nobody seems to be able to work out that this is what's going on. You know, but they same, know. Same they problem know we've what's got here. Going on. If I know what's going on, then they know what's going on. And I don't understand why in this country, Rishi Sunak doesn't declare a national emergency. Mm. Say, look, we got the intelligence right here. This is well, he's too busy making the beds. Uh, and we, oh, yeah, exactly. know, that's, <laughs> the reason. that's his national emergency. Can't be, emergency. Can't be having a national the emergency. The knives are the wrong way around. The knives are the wrong way around. <laughs> why, the dishwasher. Also, you have to make sure that the final rinse cycle doesn't get interrupted. <laughs> Otherwise, you know. I'm sorry, I've got to take a call from uh, President Macron. No, I'm finishing up the dishwasher. But why do people not understand this? Why are we still allowing these ridiculous charities yeah, yeah, to yeah. rush down onto the South Coast, put blankets around these criminals? They're criminals. 99.9% yeah. mm -hmm. .9 of them are men. Yes. And they get a bit of bad publicity, they throw a, a woman and a child in, and we, we give them a bed, we yeah. give them food. This is meant to be about money. Joe Biden, though, has oh, to say. Sorry, I'm going to ask, I'm about, gonna, I'm gonna ask Steve Biden. about this. Oh, it's actually, yeah. it's not even just plankish. It's 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 treachery. Yeah, yeah. it's it's treasonous. We don't have a show called he's, Treachery of the Week, though. It'd be a bit, he's, um, he's, he's, another he's been, it's another good idea, though. He's, but he's, mark that in, one down. In defence of Joe Biden, I will say yeah, this. Yeah, come on. This, uh, this story, they use some sort of mobile phone app to apply for yes. this. Uh, and there's no way Joe Biden's in charge of a phone app. He's got the look of a man who, the font on well, his phone will be he's in huge. charge of anything, to Exactly. Be He'll be getting one of his relatives to be involved I in I mean, that. one of the funniest so things awesome. about Joe Biden is that they actually were asked by somebody in the White House press corps, can you explain to us what Joe Biden's day is like? And they had him basically only really working <coughs> in the White House from nine till about three. And then he goes for a nap. And you kind of go in, so here are the two leaders of what we might call, you know, the Western alliance. You know, Joe Biden, who goes to bed at three o'clock in the afternoon, and Rishi Sunak, who doesn't really do much in the morning because he's busy in the house. I mean, we're not in, good, in a good place, are we? No, no. I mean, one of the only things you should really be expecting, I think, from your government, one of the, one of the key things is to keep the borders safe. Yes. Mm -hmm. To actually deliberately... But nobody's doing that. Bring people in wholesale on planes mm -hmm. you've organised. Mm. Is this an act of treachery? It is. It is. Because you know that it's going to make things worse, not better. Anyway, mm. let's go to uh, Alex Phillips. What's your next oh, one? Oh, God. This is exactly the sort of <laughs> that I hate. So, the North Face. <laughs> <laughs> That's I don't biased. know if we have to bleep that out or not, really, but we don't... The really North really Face. No, the North know. Face is the right. latest company to go woke. Yeah. And it's gone more woke than yeah. I've ever seen anyone go yes. woke. Well, can I so ask they, you what the North Face is? Oh, they make bits and bobs it's for climbing sort of up mountains oh, and stuff it's like that. climbing up mountains. They make yeah, anorak. Yeah, it's quite, wear. some quite nice sports gear, so I'm particularly disappointed about this story. But right. I don't, so, I'm not you know, I was North thinking about buying, I finally thought, oh, maybe I should get one of these anoraks, because don't. up to now I've got these... Hell you know, no. Yeah, but not now. No, not, not after now. this. No, oh, not oh no. Them. Because they will give you a 20% discount if you take an hour hour-long online racial inclusion course. Now, you're thinking, what, what does this course involve? What am I going to get from this? Mm. Uh, now, in terms of all the favourite tick box words that these BLM-loving mad people like, is allyship in the outdoors. Ally, remember you're an ally, you don't have to be trans, you can be a trans ally, that's all good. What uh, is allyship? I don't know. Okay. But the, another favourite word, fostering. Of old allyship they love saying the fostering, don't they? Fostering a deeper understanding. And this is the most racist thing I've ever heard, mm. right? Fostering a deeper understanding of the unique challenges that people of colour face when accessing the outdoors. Are people of colour idiots yeah. that can't walk in the countryside? Right. Are they allergic when you to say, air and wind? When you say accessing the outdoors, like, oh, sorry, does that mean... it's been five minutes right. since I've seen a chicken shop. I need to go right. home. This is just racist <laughs> in itself. Of course it is. It, I mean, it really. Why isn't... can't people of colour go to the outdoors? The idea that um, well, just open black the door people and need their step hand outside. holding to go to the countryside is racist. But there's another thing no. that's racist about this. If North Face are offering a twenty percent discount 
to people that do this program? Presumably it's for white people. So do they not have any black customers? Right. How are black customers going to feel about oh. not getting it's just the 20 all of this Are they allowed to fill out the form? Or? Oh, and, and an ally ship is a boat that brings migrants into the country. <laughs> Really? Oh, very good. I like to see what you <laughs> well, did there. Now, we've got an advert. Really does, we've got an sad. advert for North Face. I think this oh. is before they came up with this particular uh, latest ruse. Have a look. One of the reasons why it's more than a jacket is because it's a witness. It's a witness of the brotherhood. It probably started, you know, me being a young kid in New York. When I was rocking my North Face jacket, I was good. So this jacket has been there as one of my suits of armor. Oh my God, can I just say, I've noticed that's, the that's problem. Actually, I've noticed the problem. That's actually a real advert for North Look, but, Face. But, but he's, he's a black man and he's not outside. No. Did you see that? He was too yeah. scared to go outside. Exactly. He's got his North Face kit on, but yeah. it's too troubling for him. Well, he's only to, to wear inside. That's only to wear inside. What well, people But it's like a suit whole... of armor, he said. The idea of not feeling welcome in the country is the countryside experience. Yeah. I've been in there loads and you want to have a farmer shout at you, get off my yeah. land. You want to be slightly threatened by the fact that they own shotguns. That is the experience. <laughs> yeah. It's not prejudice against Also, you go try walking into, and you'll know this, uh, into a pub in an obscure part of the West Country, um, and you don't always get a big, oh, hello, thanks for coming to our pub. You get... <laughs> <laughs> this is a local pub for local people. What's he going to drink that one there? What's he doing? <laughs> I love that. You know, what's he after? I've walked into pubs in the country, and it is certainly very far from welcoming. Yeah. They've seen your show. Do you? That, that could be it. No, this was even before that. Yes, because you know. you're not one of us, are you? I, well, I tried to be for a while down in that do wheelchair. You, do you think North Face are going to run this campaign in China for non-Chinese people very much who don't feel it. welcome when they're brown, you know, strolling along the Yangtze no, River? No, the great thing about or... the Chinese situation is that they've got fake um, North Face jackets that they can sell you for a lot less money. <laughs> and they don't care whether you're uh, racially profiled or not. Like but you it. can have one for much more than 20% discount. You can have a 90% discount. <laughs> and here's the Chinese version of North Face. Yeah, Thank you very much. I mean, North you, Face you is my point. It's insane. Yeah. Ima or imagine, imagine them running this in India. Oh, there's not enough white people in the countryside in right. India. How, how do we make them feel welcome? Imagine. Oh, we're going we're gonna to sermonise it. It's like you can't imagine, imagine trying to feel that in it's Kenya and saying to, mm -hmm. saying to the Maasai's, you don't go out enough, do you? I think the PR <laughs> company who came up with that idea yeah. needs to be ridiculed. They well, do. Like, I think we've done that. Oh, hold on, hold on. I got this for you. Hold on. Da, 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 oh, da, 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 let me it? just okay. open she my can phone. Do it. She can do I it. think yep. I can. Constructed with the help of UK based consultancy group, more without the E, diversity. <laughs> more M -O -R. diversity. More by, yeah, M O R. More, more diversity. diversity. More, more spelling. diversity. More spelling. Yeah. That's what about less diversity? That would be better, wouldn't it? I well, want to lower awareness of yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. Especially of the countryside. Yeah, lower why, awareness. Why are we... It's going to be their Bud Light moment, though, isn't it? Because, yeah. I mean, I, I do wear some North Face stuff for, for running. It's kind of like You'll have nice to burn it all stuff now. You won't be able to now. Well, I'll wear what I've got because, mm. you know, no, 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 reduce, no, no. I think reuse, we need recycle. To, but, meet at Speaker's but, Corner and have, start some sort of a bonfire. bonfire. Yeah. 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 Bonfire. Do you know the trouble with burning... With Laura's North Face gear. The trouble with burning... I've got something to add to it. I'm the, not the trouble with burning clothes in the back garden is people think you've murdered someone. So I wouldn't do that. <laughs> the trouble with burning North um, Face gear is you're going to toxic plastic do. fumes into the air. <laughs> anyway, um, James, yeah. you're up next with a Big Brother special. Celebrity well, Big Brother, specifically. Well, there, there's been more of this bloody stupid wokery. I watched Big Brother because I was doing something on it. Yeah. And, you know, I was in it six, seven years ago. Yeah. Um, and it was quite a daunting experience. I thought I'd I be in imagine. for a day and get out. I ended up in there until the last ever day. You know they're I paying was... them 100000 a day for this one? Yeah. Well, o they're only paying Sharon, no. as I understand it, 100000 yeah. a day, and she's only in for five days. So well, what that's... was the point? I mean, well, half so Well, quid was the point. I'd never really heard of them. What about someone... Gary Goldsmith? Well, that's the whole thing coming down to. Right. So apparently, he's uh, they're demonstrating that they should never have put him in the Big Brother house mm. because of his violence against women. Yes. Apparently, he punched a woman in he the face. He was convicted of it, right? Right. And if he, he... He did do it then. He's been convicted. But then he shouldn't have been put in there. Mm. And quite frankly, I don't want to see some rather boring bloke who mm. obviously thinks he's more fashionable and more famous mm. than he is yeah. um, in there. But it has to be said, I watched the first one and the second one just so I could get a feel. I'm not watching any more, by the right. way. It was really dull. Um but he'd probably be quite entertaining. OK, well, let's have a look at him being introduced on Big Brother. Hi, I'm Gary. I'm 59, nearly 60, and I'm a London boy. My pronouns are he, him. I happen to be related to probably one of the biggest celebrities on the planet, my lovely niece, Kate Middleton. 
I'm white. It depends what heels I'm wearing, but I'm generally five foot ten. He said his niece was Kate Middleton, which is not really what she goes by anymore. No. Surely his niece is uh, Catherine, Princess of Wales. That's her yeah. official I like title. So I want respectful. Big Brother put as plank of the week for mm. being totally out of time. Mm. Mm. It's not funny. Doesn't have any celebrities. The presenters seemed all over the place. Yeah. Uh, and I just think it's embarrassing to our royal family, who I'm a big supporter mm. of, to have that twa... Uh, yeah. twa, twa Twerk. 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 Well, it gets in better there. because um, obviously the week that you launch Celebrity Big Brother with somebody in it who has been involved in domestic violence, you don't really want it to be the week that you're specialising and sort of promoting safety for women. But that's what they're doing on ITV this But there's this all week. this linear TV stuff. They're all so old-fashioned. Yeah. Oh, they children. really are. Thank now, goodness here, he told us about his pronouns. Now, hang yeah. on. I was so confused. Oh, I wasn't right. sure who he'd be. I, was, it man, was, was it a man? Was it a woman? Is that, was that, was was that why he quipped about his high heels? But anyway, here he is talking about... I think he'll be voted out here for... He is, here he is talking about Kate. Where's Kate? Um, so, because she doesn't want to talk about that... We can't talk about it. I, I, the last thing I'm going to do is... The, the, there's there's the kind of code of etiquette. Uh, if, if if it's announced, I'll give you an opinion. I hope she's okay. But I think the most important thing. Well, I, I know I spoke to her sister, her mum, my sister. She's getting the best care in the world. Apparently, that's uh, somebody called Ekin Sue. I've never heard of her. Who won Love Auction? Kind of hey, Ekin, Ekin Sue. Sue. <laughs> Are they all talking to each other? None of them seem to know who anyone was. No. Well, I didn't know. I wouldn't. If you'd shown me that clip out of nothing, mm. I would not have known who either of them were. No. There's a couple of people who are apparently singers I've never heard of. Right. And there's um, there's a guy I never watched Coronation Street, so I wouldn't know. No. There's a yeah. guy in that. Well, it used to be a lot better. Let's have a look at this. GMs oh, is fuck. pondering life's big issues. I've never understood boxer shorts. You've Why never not? understood boxer shorts? Well, they just boxer. flap around your ankle and... Uh, it's... What do you wear? What do you wear, wear in the wrong size? <laughs> flap around your speedos, ankle. Speedos, speedos or something. Hang on a minute. What is <laughs> flapping around your ankle? <laughs> <laughs> you're not built for speedos. You're not built for speedos. What's, what's wrong with these? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's wrong with them? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they're very nice. <laughs> Don't you feel you need a little support? No, no that? support. Oh, right, okay. you, you're going to no, be in page three gonna... tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> make sure of that. Well, at least they're laughing. In I think one. that's an important you know, discussion. Which is, I want to know I what mean, that looks a man's like, tackle. That looks a lot more <laughs> fun than the one that's currently on TV. <laughs> anyway, there you are. That's James Well when he was in Celebrity Big Brother uh, 2016, we think, or thereabouts. Now, coming up, I think I've got it in the right order. So next, we're going to talk about some swimming lessons uh, outdoors in Hampstead, no less. This is Bank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. It is, of course, Friday night. We're getting well into the show now. We've only got a few more to go, but I can't decide yet, but I will, obviously, who's going to win the Plank of the Week. But it's Laura Dodsworth now with the next nomination. What have you got, Laura? Um, maybe maybe your winner this week. It's Hampstead, think? Hampstead Ladies Pond, mm. because they have decided to allow males to go into and swim in the ladies' pond. Right, even what though happened? they've got their own pond. Yeah, so there is um, a men's pond, a women's pond, and a mixed sex pond. Right. Back in 2019, the City of London Corporation decided that to be compliant with the Equality Act, they should allow transgender males, if they identify as trans women, to use the women's pond. Mm. They said that was compliant with the Equality Act. It's not true at all because there's always been an exemption for sex based yes. spaces and rights. Um, and then this week, the Kenwood Ladies Pond Association held a vote to check that everyone's still happy with this. Yeah. And they got a majority vote to allow transgender mm. males into the women's pond. There was a bit of an argy bargy mm. as well, wasn't there? There was a bit of an argy bargy, yeah. So um, a real kind of veteran women's campaigner. Um, she's the right sort. She's brilliant. Venice Allen. She got up on a chair and she was shouting and disrupting the right. proceedings. The thing is, it stirred up a lot of feeling because his. Hang on, hang on. I know. No, I know. No, no. I know you're going to jump in and jumping, talk about your transgender friend in a minute. No, but no, hang nothing on. to do with that. So I was going to say though. The thing is, um, you might say, well, why should um, a swimming pool exclusively mm. be for women? But it, historically, it has been a women's pond. And I don't feel that the transgender males who want mm. access really want equality of access. No. Because there's two other ponds they could go to. I think that what feels a bit grubby about mm. this is it feels like it's about incursion and power. Mm. It's about 
um, exerting their power over what was a women's dominion. And I think some women want their privacy and their dignity in the changing rooms. They like to know they're just in a women's space. Yeah. But also there are uh, extremely religious women, you know, of particular orthodox mm -hmm. faiths that could go swimming there who won't be able to, who can't go swimming there anymore. Mm. And I think I think that's really sad. So I'm going to. I'm going to vote for the Hampstead Ladies Pond okay. because you know there are there aren't many places that we still have a single sex. It was a nice thing for women. It was a historic thing, and it's been taken away. It has. Yeah. Could I ask a quick question? Please. I mean, I do have a friend who who you wouldn't know wasn't a woman and has lived happily as a woman uh, for some considerable time now. What I'm asking about is what is trans? Does that mean they're people who are identifying as biological as women, males? But do they have Bit still... It doesn't matter yeah, because doesn't the they only have to identify as a woman to go. They so, might have. But I, I they don't think... Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. Well, they might have. Yeah. Yeah, I think because the problem here is this, If you're right? in trans, it means you're transitioning between the, one the to the other. The problem I have is this. Nowadays, you just have to say you want to. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to actually really? transition. Yeah, yeah. Just have to say, I am a... Yeah. Yeah. The, a problem, the problem I have is this, right? If you leave your front door open, 99% of the population don't go and nick your television. The person who goes through that front door is a burglar. Yeah. If you open up women's spaces for any old man who puts on a frock and says, I'm a woman mm. now, 99% of men won't go and take advantage of that. The one who does is the rapey pervert. Right. Yeah. So you cannot well, allow this. Let's have a look at yeah, uh, Venice Allen. She's protesting about this at the meeting. Here we go. Until then, enjoy maintaining your fantasy no! The trouble is, it, all it turns into is a lot of shouting, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I That's Venice, Venice Allen, who is defending the right of women to have their own space. Oh, right. That's basically what she's doing. We've got another clip. Um, she's talking to Julia here, telling us why she's upset. You know, when you're in a normal swimming spot, even if it's really magnificent, men change that space. They're splashing, you're conscious of your body. And so the That's idea... Judging going on. And, and any time I've ever taken, and I've taken quite a few women and girls to that space, they're like, oh, oh this wow. Is now, the key point is, I mean, there is, a, there is a men's pond as well, isn't there? And there is a pond... There are, different, there are lots of different ponds. There's, there are three, lots of, there's three, three ponds, ponds that you're there's, officially allowed to swim there's in. There's a ladies' pond, a men's pond... And a mixed pond. And a mixed pond. Uh, I find it very odd that people want to gather around any kind of, you know, open pond and go swimming in it oh, I with love loads wild, of other people. I love wild, wild swimming. Wild swimming is wild... Yeah, it. but that's not really wild, is it? It's in a pond no. with hundreds of other people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you want to go yeah. wild yeah. swimming, yeah. go in the sea or go in a river or go somewhere yeah. where there isn't anybody else. There is that thing the whole like... idea that you have to go and sort of bathe with collectively with loads of other people yeah. is odd. People have always done, though. They've always oh, but, done yeah, it. but I so find it a bit odd. It, it stirred up a lot of strong feelings, as you can see from the way that Venice was shouting. But that's because it's not just a story about a women's pond. Right. It's about no, women that. saying they want their own space, whether it's a pond or sports or prisons. No, I get all that. I get all that. But all that, somehow, space. somehow, all of these trans debates just end up with people shouting at each other. Mm. It's pathetic. Should we it? ask more? You know, you can't have men-only bars anymore, can you? Well, some or golf clubs. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can have men-only yeah. clubs. I didn't yeah. know you could. You yeah. can have them, yeah, but there's sure. been there's been issues yeah, where yeah. what's happened is that the licensing board will say you can't have a license to sell alcohol, so that's sometimes been a problem. There's been golf clubs that have been told if you don't allow women to join, we will not give you a license to sell alcohol. You know, so it depends mm. on the local kind of scenario. But there you are you still have to men's choose clubs. Between I mean, again, I, I was taken Check. once to lunch yeah. in Whites, which is a men-only <laughs> club in um, sort of Pall Mall. I think and the I found it. Club's still men only, yeah, I it? found it very odd. I was Given like, a name like that, this it's... collective room full of men. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Why do you want to sit in a room mm. just with a load of men? <laughs> and by the same token, why do you want to go swimming in a pond with a load of men? Yeah, this I don't is where, get any this of This is where dudes have got the upper hand. Because if you said to a woman, do you fancy using the bloke's toilet? It's absolutely <laughs> not. I, I can smell that it. thing from a mile away. But it, you don't have to I'm wait. Going in there. You don't have to wait for an hour outside though to get in. So if you're yeah, desperate, you'll go. That's because you don't just wee on the wall. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say that. Anyway. Uh, go to you, Steve. <laughs> uh, for the next one. Yes. Um, there, it's the school, Exeter School. This is a, a bit of renaming. This is a good one. This is... So the, the act of, you know, changing the name because it might be offensive. I'm generally against it because, especially with street names, it's going to muck up my sat-nav. So yes. I've got some skin in this game. Um, but they want to -cha change the names of some of their houses from uh, Sir Walter Alley and Sir Francis Drake um, because they have negative connotations of in the modern they world. Of course they do. I think the issue here is... This is not how names work, not how proper nouns work. When you've named a thing after someone, it's then its name. For example, if I say I'm nipping to the loo and afterwards I'm going to dip my hands in a Dyson for 10 seconds, you know it's an air dryer and not 
actually anything to do with James. <laughs> yes. Um, so you know when someone when the name moves across, and also historical context is kind of important, isn't it? Not just for arguing what those two people did in their era. When think when names were dished out, why don't young people just say, "Oh yeah, this is named after Sir Walter Raleigh." That's what people did in the 80s yeah. or whatever they think is a long while ago, and just move on. Because you've got to be careful about this. There's a, a school in uh, Essex that did the same thing, renamed two of its houses from those names. And the other names that they picked included uh, J.K. Rowling, which young people have probably got an issue with, and Stephen Hawking. Let's see how that one pans out. Uh, yeah, but that's the trouble. Mm. You, but also by getting rid of the name, you don't get rid of what happened. You don't get yeah. rid of history. You don't actually can. You can't wipe Sir Walter Raleigh out of history. You can't wipe what, Sir Francis what, Drake out of history. These people did great things. They yeah. were massive explorers mm. who advanced the cause of Britain on the world stage and were of their era. I'm right. so fed up with having to apologise for the past not being whiter than white, pure, no, but wonderful, that's the problem. It's too I mean, white. But also, but but it, it drives you me mad. You should apologise for using that word. It, White. I'm amazed that Joe Biden still lives in the White House and doesn't live in the Black Shack or something. It's incredible. <laughs> I know, it is ridiculous, isn't it? But the woman who runs uh, X School, of course, has funny. run many private schools because we know one of the places where the wokists really do have a great deal of sway is in the private school system. They're much worse oh, than the, than the state it, yeah. school system. And it really seems incredible. So what they've done is they've said, what we'd like is some nominations for what we can call these houses uh, from local... Uh, sort of forestry and local <laughs> castles. But the problem is, Exeter Castle, guess what it's famous for? Uh, it was the last place where they burned some witches to death back in uh, the, something like the 14th century because uh, it was the last witch trial. So I presume this woke woman won't want to name it after the castle in Exeter either. And so probably do. the Christians were involved in that. I don't know, burning what, witches. Burning witches, I yeah, think they I were. Think probably they the were. The Catholics yeah. are the ones who like the burning. They well, there weren't. Uh, you've got to remember stuff. the Church of England was only there because Henry VIII wanted to get his leg over more. Yeah, he did. That's true. And look what happened to him. Yeah, he exactly. syphilis at the end, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> you managed to him. do it. <laughs> <laughs> the moral. Uh, anyway, um, I don't know how we got back onto Christianity, Joe. No, 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 no. I think you should definitely do this Christian of the Week show. Um, <laughs> it should be coming up next. But coming up next, uh, I'm going to give you my final nomination and we'll find out who's won Bank of the Week. Welcome back to the final part of Plank of the Week. We are here, ladies and gentlemen, for your delectation every Friday, of course, at 7 o'clock. And now it's time for my final nomination, and it is the lovely Ms Meghan Markle, oh. uh, or the Duchess of Sussex, or, or um, the Duchess of Netflix, or not any longer, I suppose, whatever you want to call her, um, because there was some e extra information revealed this week by somebody who apparently had to ask her permission before it was released. Um, and you know when she appeared in America on that Deal or No Deal show? where she was one of the kind of, you know, bits of candy floss, opening boxes and showing money to people, briefcase babes, I think they were known as. Um, well, apparently after that, this is before she found fame in suits, she considered going on a show called The Bachelor um, to see if she could find herself a husband. And this was, as I say, before she met, obviously, Harry, and before she um, became a member of the royal family. Um, and this was, this was revealed by a guy called Mike Fleiss, who disclosed it on uh, Twitter this week, but he said before he disclosed it, you had to ask permission to do so, which I presume means we can pretty much I rely... I mean, she gave permission for that. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, you know what she's like. You know, she likes to give permission for people to write about her because she likes people to write about her, but only if she gives permission. That's kind of the way it works. Um, but secondly, uh, she also apparently uh, is on the lookout over here, so if any of you want to apply for the job, James, you might want to. Yeah. She's looking for a PR man. Uh, back in the UK because oh, she thinks that her image is not as good as it ought to be. Yeah. So apparently mm -hmm. uh, they're putting out some I have feelings. a friend who might be able to help like? her. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a bit busy, to be honest. Also, yeah. I don't know if I could actually spend more than about a minute in the company of Harry and Meghan without I bet vomiting. you could. I bet you'd get on with Harry really no, well. I don't think so. I, think I know you that would. you are a big... His, you're his biggest fan. That's why you should I'm do not, it. I, I you're don't. almost defending him. I am saying constantly. I get bored stiff with everybody Harry, having a go about Harry, Harry and Meghan. You know, you're doing it James now. Wales. There are so many more important things to have a go at. Religion. You've, we've already the done wokeness. religion. Yeah, I know, but, but why we've... bother with this couple who he's obviously got problems because of what happened so in his life. So you admit life. that he's got problems? No, I, I, we've all got problems, mate. So you we have. You should know. Yeah, we have. But 
But I we don't do. write books about them but and I trash can... our entire families so why into the give bargain. The publicity. You love it. You I love do love it. it. You yeah. get mixed in. It's called Ignore Plank of the Week, them. James. Leave them alone. <laughs> it's called Plank of the Week. Yeah, I know what it's I'm called. Not, don't it's patronise called, me. It's not called, <laughs> I know exactly what it's called. It's not called Leave Them Alone of the Week, is it? I don't know why people like you want to have a girl. Then there's such a simple target. What do you mean, like everyone in Britain? Well, then they're stupid. It's national so, bullying of a couple of people right. who really yeah. leave them this alone. This is from James and Well, then who's just seen shouting at a poor <laughs> guy who came on his show thinking he was going to have an honest to goodness conversation about the style of the planet. But in fact, you bullied him off the uh, air, didn't you? Who was that? That guy from uh, what's Xander. it called? Rigged. This is rigged. Yeah. We this just played rigged. the clip. He's an idiot. Xander. Oh, right. Well, you're an idiot. Him. Have a go at people like him. Yes. I'll leave poor old Well, this is why Harry we do this Meghan show, alone, James, because honestly. we have a go at him and we also have a go at Meghan Markle. Yeah, and we also have a go at the, the Church of England. Yeah, but James it is serious because he has trashed his family, who I happens agree, to be the but royal if we didn't family. Talk about it all the it time, it would have less. It can't not be news what well, they've it, done. I know. He keeps costing us money as well. So far, to date, he's cost us in legal fees alone upwards of a million pounds. So I'm going to but get my million pounds in the flesh I out. I don't care. But I do. One way or the other, there are so many more important things to worry yeah, about. But luckily, like you're not in charge of the show. Then we'll exactly. talk about yeah, boxer shorts. Point. Yeah, but <laughs> luckily, you're not in charge of the show. <laughs> you and you get, don't get a vote you, on who's plank of the week. When you get Harry on the panel, then we'll talk about it. Yeah, well, then we'll really get plank of the week going. Yeah. But he's never going to come on the panel because he doesn't like he people will, like he us. I'm on it. He doesn't like people like us, James. Call, this it, is a guy, call it Aviation I, Leader of the Week I or something. Yeah. See if you can lure and then him maybe we could lure him on. Lure him yeah. on, yeah. yeah. You see, the trouble is, James, award. that you're the one that's in the wrong here because you're the only one that ever defends him. I've never been in the wrong. Yes, you have. I have been never in been in the wrong. On this, you are. Ever. I'm afraid so. I'm, I'm sorry, you're all totally video. wrong. I am the right yeah. one. Well, I might just make her plank of the week now, just to piss I you off. I've just gone deaf, quite frankly, in the yeah. middle of all of that. I'm waiting for sorry. a new hearing aid. Yes. The thing well, about I Megan think... going on um, the, the Bachelor, it's a reality TV show, isn't it? And these people have yes. gone on reality TV shows just to improve their career and talk about boxer shorts. This is what she's Honestly. all about. Yeah. Sometimes. Although, her are you time... suggesting I'm trying to improve my career? No, back in 2016, you did. Although, it turns out she was looking for a husband. So maybe she really, really did want a husband. I think she really did want a husband. Yeah. Funnily enough, she'd already had a husband, but she ditched him because she met another bloke, <laughs> sent the ring back in the post. But this is a non these are, story. These are the kind of people we're dealing with. So but anyway, here we are. Um, a past. James Whale will never be allowed back on this show. <laughs> as he makes a formal apology <laughs> to our producer Chuck. I you know. won't be worried about that. They're supposed to have paid you. Did they not pay you? No. It's a shambles. He, uh, he's lying, shambles. apparently, according to Chuck. Um, <laughs> he has been paid. Just can't believe a word he said. Despite that, cannot... despite oh, everything, sorry. despite was that supposed to be a payment? Despite everything, right? I think I'm going to hand the plank of the week prize uh, to James Wells' nomination of Celebrity Big Brother because I think they have been complete planks by hiring that bloke who's very loosely connected to the royal family. But I know that James doesn't like making fun of the royal family, so I'm going to give him <laughs> the prize making... because you've made fun of a member of the royal family. You complete plank. He's... So here it is, <laughs> uh, Celebrity Big Brother. Well done. Oh, Thank you. Week. Giving it to me. Thank you. No, not to you. Don't be stupid. Damn. You've got your money. Stop <laughs> whining. <laughs> Uh, Alex, James, Laura and Steve, thank you very much indeed. Coming up later on tonight, it is The World According to Mike Graham, which unbelievably, James Whale has also been invited on. So you'll see him at 11.30 as well. Uh, this is Plank of the Week. See you next time.